what could have happened if Johnny didn't find me? Apparently, I only had 20 minutes in that car and I wouldn't have made it. I was actually thinking I was going to have to probably spend every waking minute at work to try and earn the money to try and, you know, pay for a lot of stuff. You know, seeing the injuries, you knew that she's going to need a lot of rehabilitation. When she was ready to start her rehabilitation, she came to us. And at the time, she was in a lot of pain. Um, she had, um, you know, the bony fractures, uh, and she, she had difficulties with mobilizing, walking. She had communication problems. Um, she had just passed her period of post-traumatic amnesia, which is a period of time just after a brain injury where you're confused and disoriented and can't form day-to-day -day memories. And I couldn't believe that I was in the brain injury ward. I didn't really, I didn't understand. I thought my physical injuries far outweighed my head injury. We started a multidisciplinary rehabilitation program for her. So lots of repetition of um, the day, the date, um, why she was here, and what had happened. Uh, setting some clear goals about what we can help her achieve to get her ready to leave our inpatient rehabilitation. Holly had a lot of difficulty with simply walking but also being able to do the functional task of taking herself to the shower and having a shower. Being in a wheelchair at that stage it kind of made it more real for me of what actually happened. Well, she was pretty much the youngest person there, so she felt really out of place and a bit scared, so I went down there pretty much every single day. I went and saw her, I think it was four times altogether while she was in Hampstead. You know, the brain injury, I didn't know how much it had impacted her. I didn't even know if she didn't know who I was. More so what we do is just got up and went for a walk around and just had conversations about everything, and that was very reassuring to me that she'd be okay because we could sort of have our normal normal conversations that we'd always had. I was very determined. I remember the physio that I had back then, she always had to tell me to slow down or to ease up because I just, I wanted to keep trying. Holly was really good at setting herself small challenges and working towards those. There are a lot of bad than goods in a recovery. It's hard to keep motivated. It's hard to keep pushing to go. Knowing that she's in pain every day, uh, that was always hard. I, oh, I wish I could trade places with her. I first met Holly when she was an inpatient at Hampstead um, and she'd been there for a little bit and was kind of preparing for discharge home. She was frightened about the unknown. She was quite overwhelmed. Um, I was yet another new person to enter her life since the injury. I think you know you're given a second chance. That is the motivation. She looked at me and clearly said to me on that first day, I just want you to get me better. I want to be normal again. I think she held my hand that tight the whole way. By the time I got home, I couldn't, couldn't feel my hand. She was squeezing it that hard, so it was pretty scary. 